Hello coders and thanks for joining us for part two of the dynamic UI tutorial series. In this tutorial we're going to be covering what a canvas is and how to use it and how to customize it properly to set up our UI elements. We're going to talk about some com common UI elements such as buttons, text, and images and we're going to work on placing and moving these elements around in, a, in our canvas and then we're going to briefly talk about anchors um, and anchors are a pretty complicated topic so throughout the tutorial series we're going to be working with them quite often until we finally get used to using them. Once you get used to using anchors, uh, they're a piece of cake, but at first they're a little bit tricky. If you, uh, if, if you are familiar with the UI's basics, uh, if you're familiar with the things I just described, you might want to wait until tutorial three where we finally get into scripting um, these UI systems. But until then, let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to start by creating a canvas by right-clicking in the hierarchy, going to UI, and coming down to Canvas. Now, without a canvas, nothing can live within our, um, without a, no, no UI elements can be seen in our game, okay? And what I'm going to be doing is covering the high points of the components of these UI elements, and starting with the canvas, we're going to talk about the canvas and the canvas scaler. Now, the canvas has three rendering modes, screen space overlay, screen space camera, and world space. Screen space overlay uh, is going to basically represent all of our UI elements wherever the screen is regardless of where any cameras are. Screen space camera is going to render our UI elements on whatever camera it is set to. So here we have a render render camera. So if you're using multiple cameras, uh, just be aware of the fact that only one camera uh, should be rendering our UI elements for that canvas. Okay, and then we have a world space canvas, which basically a, an example of when to use a world space camera uh, canvas is going to be uh, whenever you want to have canvases living in the world, essentially. So if you're, if you're thinking about having something like a health bar for a character, a world space canvas would be perfect for that. For now, we're going to be using screen space overlay. Now we have a sort order here, which is only important if you have more than one canvas in your scene that is a screen space overlay. So if you have more than one, then the higher the sort order you have, the uh, further on top that UI element layer will be rendered. The lower the sort order is, the further behind the rendering layer uh, that canvas will be. Okay, so we're going to stick with zero since that's the default. Then we're going to come down and discuss the canvas scaler. Now the canvas scaler has three UI scale modes, constant pixel size, scale with screen size, and constant physical size. Constant pixel size and constant physical, physical size are pretty much the same. Basically the, um, the images, the UI elements are going to remain the same size regardless of screen size or screen resolution. Now with screen, if we choose scale with screen size, it's going to help us a lot with our multi-resolution um, UI systems. Um, it's not going to do everything for us, but is, it's going to accomplish a lot for us and help us out. So we want to have that selected if we want to support uh, multi-resolution. Then this reference resolution is going to be fine for us for now. Um, it's the default 800 by 600. Then we have a screen match mode. We're going to re, uh, we're going to keep that at the default match with our height, and we're going to put this right in the middle, so that as our screen scales, we want the width and height to both be affected evenly. Okay. Now let's go ahead and finally add something to our uh, UI to our canvas, and we're going to start by creating a canvas. And notice that I right click the canvas to add this. That way, the UI element is a child of the canvas. Okay. So I'm going to select an image, and as you can see, an image pops up. I'm going to press T uh, to move my elements around. If you press T, then you'll see these nodes that you'll be able to grab and drag to resize the image, and then you can also rotate by clicking on the outer corners of the node. Okay. Um, you can also change the origin, which is this little circle in the middle. So we can put our origin of our sprite wherever we want, and that's going to be the basis of our pivot of that UI element. Okay, and this is this isn't true for just images. This is true for any UI element. Now I want to tell you what I was talking about. If this image is not a child of the canvas, we won't be able to see it. Okay, so let's put that back on the canvas, and now we can see it. All right, so we have this image, and uh, this image component has various properties. Uh, the only ones to be really concerned with are going to be our source image, our color, and our preserve aspect checkbox here. So. We can change our source image. I have some images here that are already imported, imported into my project. Uh, so if I choose this one, then it'll show up right there. Um, we can also change the color. This stuff is pretty standard. Uh, most of this is simple enough for you guys to be able to play with on your own, so I'm not going to talk about it. 
Um, this preserve aspect is worth mentioning though. So let's go ahead and say I want this guy to fill up the screen. Okay, so I can drag him out to the to the to the bounds of the screen here. Now, if I select uh, preserve aspect, then my aspect will be, be preserved. If I uncheck this, you'll see that there's some stretching going on. Okay, so this is definitely something to keep in mind. If you are noticing some stretching, you might want to select preserve aspect to uh, prevent that. All right. Okay, so we have that covered. Let's go ahead and add some uh, text to our image. And what I want to do is get rid of this this image here because it's going to be hard to see anything on that background. I'm going to go ahead and change the color to a sort of dark color. And we can also add transparency by lowering the alpha value on our color. All right. So I have this image here, and I want to add some text to it. And the thing is, I want the text to remain within the bounds of this image. So it's kind of like a, a background for some extra content. So what I'm going to do is create text that is child of that image. Okay, and now you can see that if I click the image, then anywhere my image moves, my text moves along with it, um, staying in the same relative position to the origin of the image. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the text and size it up because I want my text uh, to be in the top left corner. I want it to remain there um, no matter where my image is. Okay, now the text has some pretty cool, uh, pretty cool properties that we can change. Um, we can add, we can change the text so we can change what it says. So I'll go ahead and just say, welcome to the Renaissance Coders channel. Oops, I can't spell. All right, there we go. Um, okay, so you can see it changes the text there. And then we can also, of course, change things like color. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the color to something like that. And then uh, some common properties, I'm not gonna go over all these because some of them, most of them are pretty uh, self-explanatory, but we can always change the font. So. I'm going to change to font uh, code code bold, code bold excuse me um, and if you want to import your custom fonts and you're using Windows you can just go to the start button down at the bottom left type fonts click on fonts and basically it, you can choose one here and then drag and drop it into your project folder and then once that once that is imported it, once that is imported um, you'll be able to come over here click click this little circle with a dot in the middle and see your font that got imported. All right. Now something I usually play around with, uh, this is definitely up to your preference, but these alignment properties are definitely useful. Um, typically I will use full centered values here, but I'm going to go ahead and do a left aligned and a, um, and a top align. Okay. So it's going to stay up there in the top left corner and best fit is always something I like to use as well. So with a dynamic UI, you're going to have a lot of uh, automatic scaling going on. And I'm going to want my text to scale with that. So I'm going to choose best fit. And your best fit property is going to allow you to choose a min size and a max size. This min size refers to the font and, uh, and the max size does as well. So if I wanted my max size to only be 10, you'll see that the text goes back down. I can also bring the max size up to 50. And you can see that it, it's a little bit larger than it was at 40 now. Okay. So best fit is definitely useful. And that's going to cover it for our, um, for our text component. Let's go ahead and add a button to the image. So I'm going to want an image to be attached to this little background image that I have. Um, so I'm going to select button. I'm going to drag and drop the button down here. All right, so we have a button. And um, I'm not going to have any text on it. It comes default with some text, but I don't want any text on this button. Okay, so our button has an image component, and this image component is exactly like our image image component. Um, so really could put this image component on anything you wanted. Um, and what I'm going to do is, let's see, I guess I'll leave the color. Okay, so let's come down to this button component um, script here. And what we have is we can set it to interactable. So this is stuff that we, we would probably change via script. So maybe something happened and now we can use this button. So from script, we're going to set it to interactable to be true. And then we have this transition. The transition is going to be based off of whether we're hovering over the button or clicking on the button or something like that. Okay, and so to, to show this in effect, we'll say the normal color is going to be white. Whenever I'm hovering over it, I might want it to be red. And whenever I press it, I might want it to be something like purple or something like that. Okay, so if I run this, you'll see, the, see this in action. I hover over it and it's red. I click it and it's like this purple color, okay? 
Okay, so that's what that transition property does. A couple other transition properties that we have is uh, sprite swap. So if we're hovering over it, we might completely change the button image. Um, so that's what that is for. And then we have an animation which um, is going to be used for something like if we wanted to hover over our button and make it shrink or expand, we would use something like that. Um, and we'll go into some of this stuff in future tutorials, but for now we're not going to worry about covering it. <clears throat> and then lastly but not least, we have this on-click event. So this is a trigger event component um, of the button script. And basically what this is going to do is whenever we click the button, we will want some action to run from our script. So essentially what we're going to be doing is calling a function or selecting a function from one of our scripts in this onClick property. Okay, so uh, we're going to go into that into probably <clears throat> uh, tutorial number four. All right. Okay, so we've talked about images, we've talked about text, and we've talked about buttons. So let's go ahead and talk about anchors. Okay, let's say that I want this whole thing, this whole object here, to be in the top left corner of my screen no matter what. Okay, so if I go over to my game view and I change the aspect ratio to 5.4, you could or 5.4, you'll see that uh, it, I have some clipping issues here on the left and I'm too far down from the top. Okay, and you'll see that it'll only actually fit for the 16.9 aspect ratio because that's where I um, positioned it on. Okay, <clears throat> and so to alleviate this, I can use my anchors here. So if I click on my image, my uh, base image, so this is my base image because it has children. Um, you can see that each one of my children have their own set of anchors. Okay, but if I select the image, because this is the one I care about, what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag these anchors up to the top left. Okay, and now if I change my aspect ratio, no matter what aspect I'm at, it's going to be in the top left. Okay, and I'm going to explain briefly why this works. If we look at the, the leftmost region of our image <clears throat> and compare it to the leftmost anchor, that value, that difference is going to be zero. And if we compare the topmost region of our image and the topmost anchor, uh, the difference between those values are going to be zero as well. And so what happens is as the screen space or as a screen uh, size changes, those zero, zero values are going to remain the same. So the distance between the left uh, side of the image and the left anchor and the distance between the top of the image and the top anchor are always going to be zero, um, thus preventing our image from shifting around on the screen. Okay, so that was the brief introduction to anchors. Um, they're very useful. And as you can see, uh, no matter what size my, no matter what aspect I'm at, my button and my text are going to remain the same relative position within the image because they are children. So you can actually use children as a way to uh, levy your positioning and your anchoring as well. So that's a useful tool if you don't want to use anchors. It doesn't work all the time and there's definitely going to be some issues that are going to pop up uh, in the future tutorials as we get deeper into it, but we'll cover that stuff when we get there. Um, so that's going to conclude our tutorial where we talked about the canvas and how it can be used and customized. We talked about some common UI elements such as buttons, images, and text. And we talked about rearranging those on the screen and getting them anchored in the position that we want. Okay guys, so if you like this tutorial and you're liking the series so far, go ahead and drop a like so we know that we should continue doing them. Um, and if you like the series if, if you like the videos in general go ahead and subscribe if you haven't already and we definitely appreciate the subscriptions guys uh, most definitely but as always guys this has been a renaissance coders tutorial and thanks for watching <laughs>